I've worked for the United States Postal Service for most of my adult life. My career started 40 years ago in the sorting room, and... And it will end today after I post this message. They're suppressing any leaks that might even find a way to sweep this under the rug. But I have to put this out there. If I don't, I'll never get another night's sleep. There's a good chance you'll receive a black envelope in the mail one day in the near future. If you do, please don't open it. Nothing bad will happen, not right then. The envelope itself isn't really special, but inside of it, you'll find a white condolence card with your name and a date written in a pretty golden font. I promise that you don't want to know that date. None of us should know the day that we die before it happens. The first time I encountered a black envelope, I was in the sorting room. I remember pausing to study the paper for a moment. Besides the unusual color, it also felt different than any of the thousands of other envelopes I'd handled before. The paper was thick, almost porous, slightly warm to the touch. It was heavy for how thin it was. When my supervisor noticed what caught my attention, she pulled me into her office. She shut the door. I was hoping that we wouldn't see any of those this year, Diana told me, nodding for me to sit down. I still had the black envelope in my hand. The recipient's address was printed in clean white lettering on the front. There's no return address. Is it something special? I asked, trying to hand her the envelope. Diana jerked back like I'd offered her an unpinned hand grenade. Yes, she said. The very worst kind of special. We see one or two of those come through every couple of years. Some folks have been working here for a decade, aren't even aware of them. Just bad luck that you found one. I felt a chill lick down my spine. Bad luck? We have an unofficial policy about those particular pieces of mail. Sort them, forget about them, don't report them, for God's sake, don't open them. Sort it. But there's no return address. There never is, Diana said, standing up. Now please get that thing out of my office. Don't mention it to me or anyone here. Hopefully, we won't see any more for a long time. Now, I did as I was told. But I couldn't get the envelope out of my mind. I mean, I remember... I remembered feeling damp when I sorted it into outgoing. Like it was oily, even greasy. Months passed. I managed to finally stop wincing every time a new load of mail came in for sorting. Then... A little more than a year after finding my first black envelope, I found another. And then another. Within the space of six months, I'd sorted a dozen of the things, always lacking return address, always feeling off to the touch. Diana began avoiding me. So my co-workers, the old, the old hands who'd been in the mailroom since they probably used ponies for deliveries, gave me a wide berth to. Seemed I had some nasty cloud floating over me, as if I was responsible for the influx of envelopes. I began having nightmares. Vivid, smeared panic dreams full of heat and shadow and violence. Next year, I was transferred from sorting to deliveries. I suspected Diana just wanted me gone from the tiny, smoke-filled... I remember this was 40 years ago, room that passed for her kingdom. I was bad luck. That was fine by me. I laced up my boots, I got a comfortable hat, I started making my rounds. My first assignment was a quiet neighborhood on Maryland shore. I've likely seen similar places, gravel, driveways, oak trees with tire swings, above ground swimming pools. I loved it. I always carried candy for the kids that would rush out some mornings, hoping for a package or a present or a special letter. I brought Milk bones for the dogs, too, who were generally more friendly than I'd been led to expect. In four years walking that beat, I was only chased by a canine once. And when the retriever caught me, it turned out she just wanted to play. Memories of the black envelopes and my co-workers' nervous glances faded quickly. Against the fresh air, and the sunlight, and my new position... Until one winter when I dropped off the mail to a regular. Betty Majors. 
A lovely woman. Silver hair. Endless parade of colorful bathrobes. She'd always meet me at the box at the end of her drive to collect her mail in person. I usually we'd stand for a minute, chit-chat, while she opened her letters. I was just updating her on my engagement to a beautiful girl two towns over when I saw Betty frown. She was glancing at a, at a pile of mail in her hands. I felt a cramp in my lower stomach I couldn't explain, an emerging sense of dread as I watched her gaze. And sure enough. Sure enough, she was holding a familiar black envelope with white lettering. The odd, she said carefully tearing the seal. I suppressed an irrational urge to yank the envelope from her hands. Instead, I watched her face as she read the message inside. Betty seemed confused. She looked up at me. No return address? It doesn't look like it. Can I... Can I ask? I mean, it's none of my business, but... Betty shrugged and lifted the small square card up for my inspection. It's almost like an invitation, but it doesn't say for what. Gold letters. White stock, Betty's name, and a date little more than two weeks in the future. That was all. I shrugged and tried to smile. It's probably for a wedding, funeral, or a, or a birthday party. All three sound like too much work at my age, Betty giggled already moving on to open the next letter. We said our goodbyes, I finished my route. I tried to put the envelope out of my mind, but the morning of the day in the letter, I, I mean, I couldn't help but feel anxious. When Betty didn't meet me at the mailbox for our usual chat, the anxiety began to climb towards a panic. I decided to bring her letters right to her door in case she was sick or, or occupied. Stranger answered when I knocked. A young woman with swollen red eyes. Betty's granddaughter. My client, my friend. Had passed on a stroke early that morning. Some family was visiting for the holiday. Found her body just after dawn. Had only barely missed the ambulance as it took her away. And now I'm a, I've never been religious. But after that, after that day, I started going to church... I always repeated the same prayer before leaving. Lord, no more black envelopes. My prayers were answered for three years until I, I had to deliver another one. It was the same neighborhood, the same result. Man died three months after my delivery. There was another envelope the next year, another death. Other people I delivered to passed away without receiving the mysterious letter, though. I could see no rhyme or reason in it. All I could do was continue my route and say an extra prayer for anyone who received a dark delivery. Each of them died within a year of receiving a black envelope. I took solace in the fact that none of them knew what the date meant. However, judging by the fear I saw with a few folks, I worry they might have guessed. Years ticked by and I moved from deliveries to office to administration. I was hoping for a quiet retirement this year. And then a month ago, the manager of my sorting room came to my office badly shaken. Black envelopes. Dozens. Hundreds. More than he'd ever seen, not all of his staff had caught on that there was something gruesome about the deliveries, but rumors were spreading. Word came from up high to slow down circulation, act like everything was normal, basically put our heads in the sand. Another unofficial policy drifted down to management. Lose the envelopes. Trash them. Destroy them. Didn't matter. We'd burn the bastards by the dumpster load, and somehow the letters would be back in the sorting room the next day. No one could explain it. No one could figure out who was bringing in the envelopes or how, how to stop them. The same names, addresses would show up again and again until we finally broke down and delivered them. All this was done in secret as much as we could manage. I don't know how many people in USPS have caught on. I mean, maybe ten. Perfect. Maybe fewer. My guess is the government's afraid of mass panic, word getting out. 
I understand that, but I'm still posting this because no matter what we do, the envelopes continue to flow. People keep opening them, and even if they aren't sure what the dates mean, I think it sticks with them. Turns up in their dreams, eats away at the time they have left, and makes them rot with worry. So I'm sending out this message, and then I'm leaving. I'm going to try to enjoy the time I have left. You see, not long ago, I found a black envelope addressed to me, and I couldn't help myself. I, I, could, I couldn't help myself. I read the date. You always think you'll have more time. Curiosity is such a, a vicious animal. When we started getting that influx of marked letters earlier this year, I, I snuck a dozen of them out of the sorting room. I read them in my office. She applied gentle heat to the adhesive. It's not too hard to reseal the envelopes. Later, without damage, a dozen names, dozen strangers. But each of them... Each of them had the same date written on that terrible golden ink. I pulled more envelopes at random over the next few months. The date's always the same. Over and over and over. Hundreds. Thousands. I think... Something awful is coming. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast, and thank you for clicking the thumbs up, the subscribe, the follow, the bell, the whatever uh, helpful thing there is on such a platform. If you want to find your nice Halloween horror audiobook to listen to this year, check out audible.com and look for Mr. Creepypasta, because I got a whole bunch of books over there. Books like Tales from the Gas Station. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is supporting me on Patreon. If you guys have been supporting me on Patreon, or if you're considering doing so, then know that I just added in a couple of cool things for the loyalty program because I found out that I could. I had no idea that I could do that. So now, <laughs> you guys should be getting some cool things in the mail brought to you by Patreon that are pretty cool. They support the channel as well. Oh, getting to the point though, a huge thank you to patrons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, William King, Heather McDonald, Reaper 61167, Alex the Sandwich, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Ness 69420, Isoto Hatred with two exclamation points, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Melancholy Corpse, Ferb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Madam Skull Bunny, Sashi Suzaku, Grizzly Olsen Dut Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weeds, Jay, Miss Alexandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Pie Nanny, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Elves, Hades Nephew, Leadership, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Guy Harbor, Nina Smith, Nico Kayo, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much, so, so much, so, so, so much for being a part of the Patreon and helping me keep the lights on and helping me get exclusive stories and everything that we do on the channel here. Thank you guys so, so much for being a part of it. Thank everybody in the description and thank you guys who have stayed to this part of the video. It really means so much to me. I hope you all have a very happy Halloween and sweet dreams.